Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Pursuant to the Texas Open Meetings Act, this is the Commissioner's Court of Hood County, Texas. Today is Tuesday, July the 28th, 2020. It's 9 a.m. We're in the Century Jury Room of the Hood County Justice Center at 1200 West Pearl Street, Granbury, Texas. Again, Pastor Bill Miller of the Pastoral Council here in Hood County has brought another illustrious speaker with us today to give the invocation. This is Mrs. Kim Irwin of the Executive Director of the Brazos Pregnancy Clinic to lead us in the invocation. Would y'all all please rise. Good morning, would you bow with me as we pray? Holy Lord God, King of the universe, we thank you, Father, for opening up this day and giving us the blessings and the mercies that you continue to do. As this commissioner's court begins to proceed, Father God, I pray that you watch over them, help them as they produce justice to be kind and patient and loving as you would have them be. Help them to work towards this county for your blessing and your glory. In your name I pray, amen. 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 Y'all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to this great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Ladies and gentlemen, I think all of y'all know here today that we lost one of our devoted public servants here that's worked with Hood County for a very, very long, long time, and that was Glenda Mockby, who was the secretary to the commissioner's court here. She was here for a long time, almost 20 years, and knew everybody, and she really loved Hood County and really thought that Hood County was her family. She really did, and she'll be dearly missed. And I'd like to just, let's give a moment of silence for Glenda Mockby, please. Thank y'all very much. Next, we have some special presentations. And I would like to ask Mr. Jay Webster to come down and assist me in handing these awards out. Because of the hard work that Jay Webster has done, he's almost paid for himself almost. Uh, we have the, the first check here. I'll give you three heads. This is the guy here that's doing all this bad stuff. The rumor was that inside Ricky's ambulances was the most sterile place in all of the county. So with that, uh, <laughs> we're going to hand you a check here. I'm not going to tell you how much it is or are we going to tell you. It's up to you. I guess we will. It's a check for $20,000. Thank you. 
here's a check. We gave her the real money last week, too. <laughs> something the judge and Jay Webster has really worked hard on and appreciate their hard work and due di diligence on this. It wasn't for them. This stuff wouldn't happen for these associations. Uh, hats off to Jay and the judge for getting this all together. Okay, this is such a good part of the whole program. The next is the service awards. And the first award is to Laura Self. Is Laura here She'll this morning? August. She's what? August. We'll oh. Her in August. Okay. Well, that's good. We'll save her 10 years for her. That's great. The next is Toby Fries, 15 years. Oh. Sheriff Deeds to present Toby Fries with one. Tell me about him, Sheriff. Toby, he came up from. Corpus Christi, been here for 15 years, and he's my, he's an investigator now, he's my blood and guts guy, so he was trained by Sonny Frisbee to <clears throat> learn all the blood splatters and all that kind of stuff, and so depend on him a lot of times, unfortunately, when bad things happen <coughs> in Hood County, so appreciate him, and congratulations on 15 years. Thank you. This is for you also. Thank you. Thank you got big shoes to fill with Sonny Frisbee. You yep. know that. What a great guy he was. Am I right? Good. Thank you. Uh, I don't know about this next guy up here. Do you? <laughs> no, Judge. I know. I can say one thing about this guy. Back when I first went to work for Road Ops 30 something years ago, uh, Todd Tuggle was in high school. He was on top of that chip spreader, in that chip spreader while he was paving. Just a young kid. And, and uh, he's been here with us, uh, I don't want to take Don's thunder away, but uh, uh, I remember when Todd was just a high school kid working out there with us, his part-time help, and uh, he's been here a long time and done great things. Yes. Well, look at him, and he's always so serious. He also worked on our ranch out there. You remember that? Were you moonlighting on the county when you were working <laughs> for us? <laughs> Really, thank you. Todd, you got anything to say? We talked about you. You want to do a speech? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I tell you, he sure does have a good mother and father, too, doesn't he? I yes, mean, they do. He really yes, he does. He's a good man, and we see him up when we go to the drug awards at the Toler School. He's always up there and supports the kids up there, too. He's a good, strong citizen of Hood County. We're expecting greater things from you, Mr. Todd Tuggle, okay? You made it this far. We forgot all that stuff you did in high school. <laughs> all right. Well, the next item is the citizens' comments pertaining to agenda items. Sheriff Deeds has public participation forms so that if anybody would like to speak to any of the agendas, if they'll fill out the form, Sheriff Deeds will hand them to Katie Lang, and Katie Lang will hand them to me, and at the appropriate time, we will 
call on you to speak for a maximum of three minutes. Not a minimum, a maximum of three minutes. So the next item is a consent agenda. Does any of the commissioners wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? If not, do I hear a motion pertaining to the- Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Okay, motion been made by Commissioner Deaver to approve the consent agenda. Second by Commissioner Cotton, who we welcome back. Thank you. Good yes. to be back. Okay. Good to be back. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor to approve the consent agenda say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Okay, the next item is Mr. Don Lenny. Okay, Mr. Lenny, what do you have today? Good, good morning, Judge Massengale, Commissioners. Morning. This morning we have a, on the agenda is a placement of a stop sign on Rose Hill Lane at Mitchell Bend Court. Uh, this particular intersection is located in Precinct 2. Uh, after we got this uh, concern, went out and, and viewed it during, during the nighttime, and it's very, very low visibility at this intersection. So we feel like this stop sign will help a lot with, okay. with this uh, particular okay. So Concern. this is a, we're going to convene it then to a public <laughs> hearing then to to discuss this proposal. And you're saying that Ro you Ro recommend placement yes, of this stop sign on Rosedale Hale Lane. Yes, sir. Is that right? Does you have any other discussion about this? Okay. Well, let's convene back into the commissioner's court then. And do I hear a motion? Regarding the stop sign on Rose Hill Lane at Mitchell Bend. Court. Yes, Judge, uh, I'll make the motion uh, to uh, approve the pr proposed traffic uh, regulations and take appropriate action to place a stop sign at Rose Hill Lane and Mitchell Bend Court. Okay. Motion made by Commissioner Cotton to approve the proposed traffic regulation. It's a stop sign mm -hmm. on Rose Hill Lane at Mitch Mitchell Bend Court. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner. White. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Judge. Okay. No, Mr. Head, no development. Um, okay. Next, we have Ms. Becky Kidd for financial. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. For this court, your expenditures are $862,072.78. <coughs> The auditor's office has reviewed all these invoices, sees no issues, and recommends payment. And do you have any questions regarding payments over $10,000? Do you recommend payment? Yes, sir. You checked and rechecked? Checked it twice. Okay, good. Okay, do I hear a motion? Motion to pay the bills. Okay, motion been made by Commissioner Deaver to pay the $862,072.78. Second. Second by Commissioner Eagle. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Next item are the monthly reports. Uh, you have a list of the monthly reports that we've received. We've reviewed all these and recommend acceptance. Okay. Any further discussion? Make a motion to uh, accept the uh, Audit departments uh, for the period of July 1, 2020 through July 15, 2020. Okay. Motion is made by Commissioner Cotton to approve the um, <coughs> reports as prepared by the audit department. And again, you checked and rechecked, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I hear a second. Second. Second by Commissioner White. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries 5-0. Judges, Judge Commissioners, the last item I have is the financial review of Constable Precinct 1 records. We've reviewed the all their documentation regarding an audit, and we see no issues with this and recommend accepting this audit. Okay. Okay, do I hear a motion? Judge, I'll make the motion to accept the uh, 2020 review of Constable Precinct 1 financial records. Second. Okay, motion been made by Commissioner White to accept the review of Constable Precinct 1 financial records. Second by Commissioner Eagle. 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Ms. Kidd. Thank you. Okay. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, that brings us to miscellaneous. Um, and I see the illustrious Linda Mellon here. The next item is presentation by the veteran service officer, who is Linda Mellon, briefing the county on the VA spending for the year end 2019 for Hood County veterans. And I just want to say this is that Miss Mellon's office is in the historic courthouse, which is where my office is. And I can't tell you the number of veterans that I see coming in and out of them. And to a person, they absolutely adore Linda Mellon. You couldn't get one of them to say anything bad about Linda Mellon if you paid them a thousand dollars. They better not. Uh, they, they better not. She owes the thing. So, Miss Mellon, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate the support that I get from the court. I, you, you have no idea what that means to me. To put some of the spending in context, what I did was I brought the FY 2015 geographic distribution of VA expenditures with me to compare to the 2019 expenditures. So, for Hood County, at the time, we had 5,900 and 80 veterans, and total expenditures were $33,722. Uh, in 2019, we had 5,552 veterans, and total expenditure is $48,694,000. So we went from $33 million to $48 million in a matter of four years. So we've been working very hard to make sure that our troops are getting their compensation and pension, making sure these guys are getting enrolled in the VA healthcare system so that they are not on the uh, indigent rolls. Anybody who qualifies for VA benefits, they need to come and talk to me. We're also, um, we're also talking to the veterans that are Navy, the Navy Vietnam veterans, those guys that are Blue Water veterans are now entitled to uh, benefits are as recognized as having been exposed to Agent Orange. So we're reaching out to those guys as well as those who are in the ground as part of the Nehmer lawsuit. Now I wanted to talk about really fast, um, just to put things in context also, you know I cover Somerville County as well. Somerville County in 2015 had 576 veterans and we had $2,966,000 in compensation. Uh, Somerville County now has 632 veterans and we're at 4 million $471,000 in expenditures. So, uh, and this includes compensation and pension, it includes education benefits, uh, it includes medical care and insurance and indemnities. Do you have any questions? Now we understand why the veterans like you so much. If You're there's working. money out there to be getting for these veterans, you get it, don't you, Ms. Well, $48 million is a lot of money, and, and that's $48,694,000 is a lot of money, and that's how much it's coming into the county for our troops, so, in expenditures by the VA, so. Well, good. It's, You're doing a great job. I'm thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, and thank you. Thank you for thank your support you for, for our troops. Thank you for our veterans. Appreciate it. You did. Before you, go, you. Before you go, Linda, I, I want to say one thing, and I know the court didn't know this. My uncle... Uh, Curtis Deaver lived in Alvareda, and he passed away several years ago, and uh, his his wife was my Aunt Betty, called me and said they didn't have no s such a thing over for the veterans. I guess Alvareda is in Johnson County, right? I don't know what county, anyway, whatever county that is. Uh, she was reached out to me, and I reached out to, to Linda, and she got it all taken care of, and they was very appreciative of it, and uh, they, uh, you know, let everybody know he was a veteran and, and, and Linda took care of it and she went above and beyond her call of duty and I really appreciate that. Thank you. It was, a, it was an honor. Our veterans. It was an absolute honor. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Oh, she's, how many years were you in the service? I served uh, 30 years, 6 months and 29 days total, 24 years active duty. How about that? And so that's why she takes care of all the veterans and she does a great job at it. So keep up the good work. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Linda. Okay, item number two, consider and take appropriate action to approve the proposed 2021 Hood County holiday schedule. Judge, this is, <laughs> this is one of the things Glenda did and uh, I guess it's probably one of the last things she done before she left us and uh, uh, she put this together. Uh, I think Ron Cotton looked at it. Commissioner Ron Cotton and I looked at it and we would like to present this, present this to the court for approval. 
I guess if y'all had time to look at it, every, all the yes. schedules and everything, well, consider that there's no uh, no uh, uh, deliberation on it. If there is, uh, I'll hold up, but I'd like to make a motion to approve the holiday schedule for 2020-21. I'll second that. A motion is made by Commissioner Deaver to approve the 2021 Hood County holiday schedule, second by Commissioner White. Any, uh, any, Commissioner Cotton, I'm sorry. Um, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. I mean, we will certainly miss Glenda. She was a fixture down there, and she could be a little, if you crossed her, She'd stand up for her rights, I'll tell you that. Had a lot of grit. <laughs> okay, item number three, discuss and take appropriate action regarding a check received by the county judge for $33,427.75. This is a 2019 surplus from the Texas Association of Counties Health and Employees Benefits Pool to be placed in the Capital Projects Fund 55. Ms. Leanne. That's good. You explained everything just perfect. <laughs> I never got that check. Did you take my check? I did take your check. <laughs> okay. So we just need it to be approved. The auditor and I discussed on where we should place the surplus, and capital projects is where we decided that it would be best. Okay. I know we never turn down checks, do we? I've never known the two of you to ever refuse a check and it gets deposited. So. And we're not always guaranteed the surplus, so this is a good thing. Last year I think it was about eighteen or nineteen thousand. So this is really good. Okay. Any further discussion? Do I hear a motion? Yeah Judge, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the check received by the county judge for thirty three thousand four hundred and twenty seven dollars and seventy five cents to be from the uh, Texas Associated Counties Health Employee Benefits Pool to be placed in uh, Capital Projects Fund fifty five. Second. Okay. White to deposit the check from TAC for thirty three thousand. $427.75 to be placed in the Capital Projects Fund, 55, second by Commissioner Eagle. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you all. Okay. Then item 3A, discuss and take appropriate action on Environmental Health Department's request to use the remaining funds in the vehicle equipment in the amount of $3,525.66 for the construction of a fence at the Citizens Collection Station. Ms. Jeannie Stacks. Yes, sir. How are you? We've had some issues at the collection station with people coming in from road ops and driving to the Citizens Collection Station. Um, the grant if everything goes correctly, we'll cover the east side fence, and this would be for the west side fence. It's about 100, and, between 100 and 140 feet of fence with double gates for the new entrance. What's happening, Judge? People are coming in on the 377 side, going through road ops when, when they're closed, and using the dumpsters, dumping whatever they want to in there. People's figured out they can come around when nobody's around and and slip in there and and and, and dump whatever they want to down there. So uh, Well this is something really needed. Yes, I I, I think so. Okay. Will the commissioners get a key to that gate? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I went out there yesterday and um, there was a, a gentleman there that was pitting some metal, but he was the road ops guy and he had just brought all his extra metal and set it by the bin. So he said, I promise I'm from road ops. So, because I guess he could see I was a little upset at him. <laughs> but there has been people slipping in there and uh, while, while they're closed. And of course, when road ops is out working, there's nobody there at the road ops side except for you know, where Don's office is, but it's hard for him to see them coming in. They slip in there and they know how to get in there and not be seen. So I think this would stop a lot of that. This will come from uh, 
the vehicle equipment line item, right? She had been allocated a certain dollar amount for vehicle equipment when she right. got the new trucks. This is the remaining balance, and uh, is this going to be enough? Do you need a little more? To There's a, I have one bid currently. I haven't received two yet, and the first bid was $4,730.80. So it's just over a 1000 I'm short right now. So we need an extra thousand dollars to go along with the three thousand five hundred, correct, Becky? It's an extra twelve hundred dollars, roughly. Yes. An extra twelve hundred. Okay. Okay. Do I hear a motion? I'd like to make a motion to uh, allow uh, use the remaining funds of vehicle maintenance of three thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars sixty-six six cents plus one thousand two hundred dollars out of capital to build a fence. Second. Who won there? I guess I did. Okay. Tie goes to the closest person to the judge. So motion's been made by Commissioner Deaver to allow the $3,525.66 fence, the Citizens Collection Station, plus $1,200 out of the uh, Fund 55 to pay for the fence, second by Commissioner White. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. And ladies and gentlemen, I just noticed something up here and I gotta call everybody's attention to it. The election, the dreaded election is finally over with and I'd like for everybody here to recognize Mr. Kevin Andrews who has won precinct one who's sitting up here. Stand up, Kevin, so the ones that don't know you recognize you. Congratulations. I like this one. And secondly, I'd like to recognize Mr. Jack Wilson here, who won Precinct 3. Stand up, Mr. Wilson. I want to thank both of you gentlemen for coming down here. I know I've seen you a lot down here, and I appreciate y'all taking an interest to learn how we're doing all of this. So you are taking two good men's place here that really put their, they really carry deeper. Commissioner Deaver and Commissioner White, I tell you what, they really love this county and do it. And I'm really confident that you two guys watching them will do likewise. We really will welcome you and hope that we have a good strong court. Thank you all for being here. Okay, the next item is a real good deal here. This seems to be a timely motion, and that's to consider and take appropriate action to accept riot shields donated by Scott London. Ten shields to the Sheriff's Office, two shields to Constable Precinct 2, and two shields to Constable of Precinct 4. Boy, I, I, I like that. That's i tell you what, that may be very timely if what I see on TV is true. <laughs> so I'll take it away and Mr. London, please. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity to come here this morning. Um, life is always unpredictable and uh, the future is, is always full of things just we're not prepared for and 2020 is one for the books. Um, we've, had, we've seen a lot of things nationwide. Riot shields are generally one of those things that the larger agencies have, but smaller agencies frequently don't. Um, we've been very blessed here in some respects here in Hood County that the uh, protests and counter protests that we've seen have uh, brought about nothing terribly adverse. Um, but it gives us the opportunity to reflect on our readiness. And uh, as we go through and evaluate uh, where we are, this was something that we discovered that in Hood County we, we just don't have. And so uh, my prayer is that these will collect an awful lot of dust and that we don't need them. Um, but given the opportunity uh, or the circumstances where they would be used, um, I pray that they protect those who protect us. And so with that, I would like to present uh, on behalf of the Oath Keepers, uh, two shields uh, to the constable standing next to me and 10 to the sheriff. Um, 
and they, at a cost of about $175 a piece, that's about $2,100 donation, not quite the 33000 you got from uh, uh, Texas Association of Counties, but by golly, I, I pray that uh, they will keep our, those that protect us safe. Well, thank you very much. I think it's a very timely deal, and we accept them gladly. So, like you said, I hope we don't have to use them, but it'd be nice to have them if we do need them. So, thank you very much. And is there any further discussion? Do I hear a motion to accept these shields on behalf of the Oath? I make that motion. Okay. Motion to uh, accept the right shields donated by Mr. London, 10 to the Sheriff's Office, and 2 to each constable standing on his left and right. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Deaver. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. <laughs> Motion carries 5-0. Again, thank you, Mr. London. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Oath Keepers. Thank, thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Good. Okay, the next item, consider and take appropriate action regarding the Granbury Volunteer Fire Department's request for subsidy from Hood County. Chief, how are you doing? Very good, sir. Looks like you've been out fighting a fire already today. <laughs> it's been are an early prepared? morning. <laughs> I am prepared. Okay. Judge, We're commissioners, I appreciate your time and allowing me to be on the agenda. If you notice, when I, as preparation for this, I sent you a mountain of documents. Um, those documents are in place uh, from a request saying to make an argument and justification to you gentlemen for our subsidy. In that stack of documents, I also had attached basically my argument, and I don't know if you gentlemen have had a chance to read that over. Uh, if you like, I can go through that. Um, and I'd also like to be able to take any questions that, or concerns that you gentlemen have. Granbury Volunteer Fire Department was chartered in 1907 and has been volunteer since that date. GVF, GVFD is chartered and state recognized as a 501c3 nonprofit that is contracted by the city of Granbury to provide emergency fire services. And as much as GVFD is part of the city, we are a standalone organization by the, recognized by the state of Texas. The data and statistics presented today are based off of GVFD's dispatch calls into the city and county, and the majority of today's discussion will be focused off of 2019. Some trend data will be indicated off of the last 10 years. For the year 2019, we had an operations budget of $132,500 that, that was used to respond to 1,604 calls using 22 apparatus that responded out of three stations with an average of 55 members. In addition to our responsibilities to responding to a wide variety of emergent and non-emergent calls, GVFD hosts two separate fire academies for all Hood County Fire Department's newest members and having two specialized rescue units that specialize in swift water and high angle. So, how did I get here today and why are we requesting this subsidy? The last known contract expired in 2012 and since then GVFD, the City of Granbury and Hood County have operated in a spirit of cooperation and have reciprocated mutual aid given with no fire subsidy to GVFD. So what changed? The factors that have contributed to GVFD requesting the subsidy provided by Hood County is based off of past expenditures. The city of Granbury has contributed over the 10 years and particularly 2019 with Engine 6 out of service while being refurbished. The investment was into GVFD's operations of city-owned apparatus and equipment, and these items require testing, inspections, maintenance, and they do break down or have to be replaced over time due to expiration dates. The requests were made by GVFD over the past 10 years with the justification and consideration given for firefighter safety, efficiency, and improved response times. One point I'd like to consider, it wasn't until late 2019 that the city had become aware that no contract between GVFD and Hood County existed. Over the last eight years, all organizations have reciprocated services in good faith because they assumed a contract was in place. Every single individual in this room currently involved in today's discussion is new to their position since the contract expired. In effect, it's a problem inherited. After I was elected chief in January, I learned about the contract issues. Fire Marshal Jeff Young and myself had started a discussion in the first week of March 
then COVID happened. And that is why I'm so late here so late in the year. With the city and county working hard on COVID, there was a three month pause to the work Jeff and myself had started. In that time, I've done research, found data, and prepared for today's statement. I fully agree with the original question made by city management in January. Can GVFD continue operations outside of the city without a new contract? My goal is to obtain a fair contract that is equal to what other volunteer fire departments are currently receiving in the fire subsidy. And I want to emphasize, I don't want to take away from the eight other volunteer fire departments. I'm asking for whatever subsidy be considered. It does not reduce the subsidy of the eight other departments. GVFD cannot benefit at the cost to our neighbors. The current subsidy is $1,618 per month. And this is what GVFD is requesting from Hood County. What could happen? If GVFD cannot obtain a fair contract between GVFD and Hood County, then the tentative date discussed between myself and city management has been October 1st, 2020. The city will consider funding a city-only volunteer fire department and GVFD mutual aid response into the county could stop. What is lost? Ultimately, fire draw districts will be redrawn, call volume shifted, budgeted, stretched further, and county apparatus redistributed. The impact in Hood County response times will be longer. County fire departments will have higher operating costs to higher call volumes and their members will have to respond to even more dispatch calls. The city will lose its mutual aid from neighboring departments and exposing GVFD to be very short of a workforce on large events, which in, in effect affects the overall safety of any scene. The city and county both need to be prepared to explain to its taxpayers why the fire station across the street didn't respond to their emergency. GVFD is making its best effort to make its argument and justification for consideration of the subsidy. No matter what happens, I can tell my membership, my fellow chiefs, the city and county citizens that GVFD has made its best effort. For the year of 2020 through the month of June, GVFD has responded to 576 total calls between the city and county with 1,076 apparatus responses with an average response of three minutes and 55 six seconds from tone out to en route and six minute response time to being on scene with an average of seven firefighters. More specifically to Hood County, GVFDs responded to 88 calls with 159 apparatus in the dedicated GVFD Hood County Response District and 116 mutual aid calls with 20, 255 apparatus into the neighboring fire districts. One critical factor that's being forgotten and is going to be my primary justification for GVFD receiving the subsidy. The focus of all parties involved today is how many dispatch calls are responded into the city versus the county. The critical point I must bring to attention is GVFD's designated county response district that surrounds the city in sections of Hood County inside the city limits of Granbury. 20 years ago, Hood County purchased nine tanker pumpers and one, tank, one tanker that was provided to provide fire suppression throughout Hood County. GVFD was issued engine six and tanker one and both apparatus fully equipped to protect the GVFD fire district and provide mutual aid to the neighboring fire districts. More recently, Hood County's refurbished engine six and GVFDs equipped the apparatus. These Hood County owned apparatus have served and operated in the city of Granbury just as they've primarily been used in Hood County. GVFD's desire in obtaining a new contract is to continue and supplement GVFD's response with Hood County's apparatus into Hood County. Hood County commissioners and judge and residents and taxpayers know the subsidies being utilized. GVFDs proposed a budget with line items to present our res represent our responsibility with a contract in place that also ensures mutual aid response to the eight other fire districts of Hood County, along with access to city owned apparatus in specific scenarios when needed or requested. Now I also, I'm not gonna go into a breakdown of all of our equipment. Um, I, I can if you gentlemen would like me to. And then the last thing I'd like to talk about is what's our prospective city and Hood County call volume? How, do, how much mutual aid are we actually receiving versus how much mutual aid are we actually going out? And I, I really feel bad trying to hinge an argument off of this. Because to me, I don't care where the mutual aid goes or comes. The mutual aid's the single most important thing that any of these departments have and offer. And 
at the end of the year last year, it boiled down to Granberry went out of our district 200 times and the county came into our district 137. Also have just some basic sizes and square miles and populations. The city square mileage is 16.9 miles with a population of 10,073. County response district, this is our response district, is 35.51 miles with an estimated population of 15,000. The complexity of the GVFD's fire, ex complexity of GVFD's response district. There are multiple Hood County islands inside the city limits of Granbury. And these islands are inside GVFD's county response district. In the event the county response into these areas, departments have to drive deep into the city limits of Granbury and be able to respond to these areas. These areas currently fall under GVFD's county fire district because we are by far the closest department to these areas. Response times for first time apparatus on scene will be dramatically increased for any department responding into GVFD's former fire districts. And lastly, what does GVFD have more apparatus? As to why GVFD has extra apparatus in Tanker 1 where the rest of Hood County Fire Departments, that decision was made 20 years ago. GVFD sits in the center of the county. Both Engine 6 and Tanker 1 are not housed at the same stations. The trucks are effectively split by Lake Granberry. It is common to have multiple fires happen at any time and it is common for two apparatus to go in two different directions. This is possible due to strategic plan planning and the large membership that GVFD currently has available for response. Having two apparatus is a great benefit and public service because GVFD, because GVFD has two apparatus does not mean that we're rewarded with a surplus. It means we have more testing, inspections, maintenance, and equipment to replace because we have a larger mutual aid response and more calls to respond to. These apparatus take personnel to operate, which means more in training, PPE, equipment, fuel, and total people needed to respond appropriately. Just because GVFD can effectively use two apparatus and respond accordingly, GVFD can easily make the justification that we would need the subsidy. Thank you. Anybody have any questions here of Chief Hall? Not really, just to, to let you know, I don't think there's anybody on the court who was here in 2011 when this agreement was made, but how did we go 20 years? How, and and, and how, how has it worked for 20 years? Well, now it's not working. <laughs> I, I think at the end of the day, it, it's, I, I don't know, I, I truly don't know how the contract got missed. I, I, I can't answer that. I'm brand new to the position. Uh, this is just one of the many things on the administrative side of the department that I've tackled. Um, and the reason it's worked, outside of this, the reason it's worked is because that's, that is what these departments do. They work with each other. Um, and don't get me wrong, we occasionally have disagreements with each other, but when the calls come in and we're toned out, we go. And it has been that way since I've been on this department, and it has been that way long before I was ever on this department. Uh, because at the end of the day, all these departments understand what it's like to have an emergency, a large call, and only have your department there and not no, and, and, and not having to be burdened with that concept that no one else is coming. You know other departments are coming if you ask. And that's why it's worked, is because even though the contract wasn't in place, the departments still just work together. And, and that wasn't just recently. It's, I can point to calls this year, last year, 10 years ago, 50 years ago, where the departments still work together. I like what you said when you said you don't want to take away money from the eight other volunteer departments that serve Hood County. I'm sitting there looking at Kevin Andrews, who is the fire chief in Lipan, am I correct? And I'm seeing Jeff Young up there, and there's a camaraderie 
among them the, all these five fighters that really will come to the aid of each other. And I wish that we do have the money. I'm sitting here looking at Becky Kidd when, after you and I spoke last week and asked her about the money, and she said, yeah, I wish I had the money too because it's been operating for so long where we've been paying the subsidy to the eight volunteer fire departments that truly need it, that without the subsidy, they they just wouldn't be in existence, is the way I understand it. Yeah, period. I, I also really agree with that, and this is something that I've really told the city. I said, I, I truly understand our interest in wanting to get the, the subsidy, but it cannot come at the cost to these other departments. It can't. We, we are a large department. We are well-funded. We always do want more. We do run a lot of calls. Uh, and the money is not just going to go to a bank account. We have a lot of stuff on our county-owned apparatus that need to be worked on, replaced, and on. And that's where the money will go. But it cannot come at the cost of the other departments. That, that's the single most important thing that I ask of everyone at this, is it, it can't come from them. One other thing that we had at our last meeting is that air packs that are on these fire trucks. And man, I, I'm really all for that. I mean, these firefighters, we've got to give them the best equipment, the safety equipment to protect all of them. And we couldn't even come up with the money to buy all 50, I think it were 50 that were requested, and we came up with the money. We wanted 54, and we have one for 30. And so, see, and that and that came about like with my department, we cut four thousand dollars of travel and and education because of COVID. We couldn't go anywhere, so we a lot of people cut their budgets to come up with, and we had a struggle, and didn't even come up with the full. 54 air packs, and I thought that air packs is something that, man, we truly need to have on all these fire trucks up here. And uh, uh, tell me, uh, Chief Andrews, do you have fire packs on all of your trucks? Do you have all, the, are they in date? Some yes, yeah, some no. Uh, uh, we're, getting, we're getting on that borderline. That expiration date's coming, coming soon. So that's, you know, I, I personally, the subsidy, I, I would really like it if, if, the, if the money were there. I mean, speaking for me, I want to be good partners with the city and the city good, be good partners with all the other uh, volunteer fire departments. It, it's just the question of the availability of the money just right now. And so I've got the auditor shaking her head. You see that peripheral view up there? You know? I got one thing to say, Judge. Go I got a draft of a interlocal agreement that I guess the city has put together and it talks about, you know, y'all are wanting fifteen hundred a month for uh, subsidies and another five hundred and eighty three dollars a month for capital. But when you, when you go down further on this in section six, it says, the county agrees that it shall at its own cost and expense purchase and keep in force all times insurance for the mini, minimum uh, of liability under the Texas Tort Claims Act. The county agrees to provide copies of such policies or policies of insurance or evidence satisfactory to the county uh, auditor of Hood County, Texas, the Granbury Fire Department and the city of Granbury. And then below that, it says the county agrees to provide liability, damage, comprehensive collision insurance for vehicles uh, shown in Exhibit A. Uh, uh, and it says including those vehicles owned by the city of Granbury and tough enough, or tough enough to care. So what you're asking for is $25,000 a year plus all the insurance and uh, to be paid. Is that correct? The 25000 is off of the just proposed subsidy that Jeff and the workshop we had been working on. So the 25000 is just a figurative number. Uh, let's 
go into the new budget year, and let's say that the subsidy remains the same, which is $18,000 a year, then it'd be the 18. The argument for the insurance is based off of the fact that the other eight departments in Hood County also have all of their insurance currently provided and covered for by the county. And that includes everyone, Pecan, De Cordova, Oak Trail Shores, all nine, all eight of the other departments have their insurance co covered. I've been working with Jeff Young. Uh, he's been getting that particular insurance quote and to add all of Granberry's fleet, and I, Jeff, please correct me if I'm wrong, it's 10 apparatus total is $2,500 a year. So the, the, the cost is there, but again, that is something that is provided to the other eight departments. And some of these other departments have large fleets. They're also in a higher income district and neighborhood, but they still get, are afforded the same consideration. Now, the last thing I will add to all of this is I'm definitely not an insurance guru, and I have tried very hard to kind of figure out our insurance, but at the end of the day, our insurance is provided through a blanket policy that, that covers all of the apparatus in the city of Granbury, and that includes water department, parks, and on. And for me to be able to try and give a comparative breakdown of what it costs to cover those trucks, I, I can't do that right now. I can try and look it up and provide that information to you uh, later, but that's, that's all I can offer on that. I've got a question. Uh, I guess you worked with Jeff. What, I've, what I got delivered to me yesterday is the, the draft from the city on the proposed agreement and then a rebuttal draft from uh, Jeff Young. Have you read his rebuttal on what he proposes? Yes. Do, uh, you, do you support what Jeff has proposed as a rebuttal to the contract by the city? At the end of the day, yes. Okay, and here's why. Everyone's gotten their teeth kicked in with COVID this year. There just hasn't been time to truly be able to work on every single aspect of trying to figure out every stipulating point of the contract. And I am more than willing to take a gesture of good faith, cooperation, and at the end of the day, ensure the mutual aid. Because from my perspective, don't get me wrong, I'll use the money, but what I'm more interested in is the mutual aid. The mutual aid is 10 times more important to me than the actual subsidy, okay? Because we do have large fire events and we have a much higher chance of having a very large fire event in the city of Granbury, just because of the nature of our buildings and our high occupancy residencies. The mutual aid to me is priceless. It is absolutely priceless. So to answer your question, yes, with the understanding that we will continue to work next year on trying to come closer and closer to a line that is, gives everyone a fair opportunity to be represented and makes all parties happy. But again, it, COVID's just clubbed us all over the head and there's 5,000 things that we're all working on and unfortunately, even basic information requests get delayed by weeks because you have staff out of office or the other individual that they're trying to contact, their servers are down because their IT department's down and just on and on. And, and the ability to try and just get raw data and put it together, what should take just a few days is taking weeks now. I'd like to clear up one, I mean, I. I'm under, I understand what you're saying and where you, you guys are coming from, and I've looked at both con the contract that was proposed by the city and then the contract that mutual aid agreement that's, I, I won't, don't know if it's a rebuttal, but it's an answer to, it's, it's a proposed from our end of it. But you're, you're saying you're, I guess I'm a little confused here. You say that the contract that we had bef <coughs> that before expired on 2012, uh, 
I'm, see, I'm seeing right now we're still under the contract just by reading the terms of it. It, ex, it shows right here on page two of the contract that we're actually, I believe, working under that uh, it's, it expired on 2014, September the 30th, but unless otherwise terminated, uh, it renews for subsequent terms, plural, of three years. So it went to 17 automatically, and then it's, we're in it now. So to say that this contract that we, that was signed on the, in 2011 is expired is not right. Okay. So I just want to point that out to clear up the record that we still have a contract with, with you guys. So that's going to mean look, basically renegotiating this. Right. And then last, again, what I'd still add to that is, is that in that time, we have not received a subsidy. So again, this is, that's really why I'm just bringing this up. It, whether it's expired or renewed, I just want to really highlight this because at the end of the day, it's something that our department's focusing on and then also the city. So what you're saying, if I can get it clear, you're wanting the same subsidy as the other uh, period. You're yeah. not worried about the insurance of that. You're just worried about the subsidy. It, for right now, I want the subsidy. If that helps get everyone in good cooperation where we'll actually sit down and talk and actually figure something out, I'm more than willing to sign a one-year contract for that. Again, though, the stipulation is, is that eight other departments are being provided this service. And Granberry's being singled out, and it's not being given to everyone. So we'll be signing a contract, but it's a different contract. Your, the city's budget around 600 grand for your fire department? Yeah, our total budget, that includes personnel and we'll call it the bills and then our operations. Our operations budget's 132,000. But y'all get other benefits too, right? Y'all get uh, retirement and- Yes, sir, there's a pension that was started a very long time ago. Uh, and the pensions based off of participation in the department. Um, and that is something that is set up uh, individually through the city. Also, if other departments were interested in setting something like that up, they can. So but yes, a, sir. If an alarm goes off or a fire goes off, are y'all one of the three that generally get dispatched? Uh, for, are or, you talking about like where at? Just anywhere in the county. For the most part, yes. Uh, there's two spots where we're not first response, uh, first tone out. That's pecan and lipan. It's always going to be based off of your nearest department, which Correct. makes a lot of sense. You're going to tone your nearest departments first, and then your outlying departments, you'll tone second. Uh, for us, we're the first, first response department for Station 70, Station 20, Station 30, Station 40, Station 50, and Station 90. And again, that's just because we sit in the center of the county. We border all of those districts directly. On your list of uh, apparatuses that you have on the back here on your Exhibit A, we provide insurance for four of them, right? Yes, sir. Who owns these tough enough to care? I mean, I just made a phone call today. I had talked to uh, Brad Snyder. Um, I'm not, not sure if you gentlemen are familiar with Brad Snyder. He owns New Scope Marketing. Um, that is a subsidiary of New Scope. It is their nonprofit. They also respond with those apparatus, and he covers the insurance on those apparatus. And I realize that I know where you're going with that. Uh, I don't know how that got on there. Oh, I wasn't going nowhere with it. I just want to know why, you know, the, you know, I see county and city, but I see something else on there. Right. Yeah, I, I did not add those. Um, I called Brad, though, because I did see that. And uh, I asked him if, if the city was covering his insurance also currently and he, he's, he, Brad, Brad's organization is covering his insurance. Do you, <clears throat> while we're looking at this contract that was presented to us on Section 10, do you have any uh, understanding of why 
Uh, it proposes to take wage, disability payments, workers' comp, pension payments, and every medical expenses and all that and, and push that over on the county as our expense? I'm not an insurance guru. I didn't write that. I, I, can't, I can't explain the justification for why the city is requesting that to be included in there. Um, I'm more than willing to get back to you with that. Um, but again, that, that is a stipulation and part of the contract I didn't put in there. My primary focus has always been the subsidy because, again, I look at it as a good keystone part to start from and work off of. Um, and I'm not saying that the other stuff's not important, but again, at the end of the day in our organization, I don't, I don't do insurance. The city does that. And I, I can't truly make that argument and justification right now. In your uh, statement that you read, uh, you talked about mutual aid and that potentially what could happen if we don't come up with a new agreement, a negotiated agreement, the mutual aid could go away. What would happen if, if Granberry called Hood County to come in and help with a fire inside of the city if you don't have a mutual aid agreement? What, what would happen? Then we are technically entirely up to the mercy of the other departments choosing to come or not. Now, we could try and make the argument that that is the case right now, because at the end of the day, we're still volunteer. But with that said, I don't know of a fire, city, county, anywhere, where no one has not come. And I don't want to do anything to potentially jeopardize that. And I don't want to be at the mercy of trying to make sure that we have everyone else really on our side and that we've really talked to them and we make sure that we make sure that they're informed and it's, it's 10 times easier to just say, I need help and they come. You know, it's all about protecting Everybody in this county, it's not Period. us against them. Yeah, no, no. And, and that's, that's one of the focal points of this is, is that we focus too much on the city and county. It's not about the city or county, it's about the citizens. And for me, it's about the citizens that are directly in the city of Granbury, but also right next to the city of Granbury. And there's a lot of them, there's 15,000 of them that fall into our district. It's a huge population between the two, it's 25,000. So, I mean, we're talking at least to the third of the entire population of the county, and we have got to protect them. We have got to. It's not up for debate. We, we ha can have this discussion. This is a great discussion to have. But when it comes to our actual service to our citizens, that's not up for debate. It, it can't be. We have to figure out a way to be able to provide them with the most effective, timely, cost-efficient service that we can provide. And I really think right now we're doing that. I do. Matt, you, you've stated several times you are a volunteer fire department. Mm. Why is the city dictating what y'all can and can't do? I know some of this verbiage comes from the city of Granbury. Sure. And I don't like this threat. If we don't get what we want, we could not possibly make outside city limit calls. And I know it's not you. I know there's a little more to it than this, but that is a thorn in my side. And I can understand that. At the end of the day, the way our organization works is, again, we're a 501c3, and we are contracted to provide emergency services to the city of Granbury. In those services, the city provides equipment, apparatus, gear, testing, on and on. That entire budget, the $680,000 budget, is provided by the city. We do fundraising, but it is nowhere on the level of that. Right. So the stipulations and the, the connection between the contract and our services, unfortunately, are tied together because we may still be more than willing to provide these services, but at the end of the day, I would ask with what? We don't own any of this. The city owns it. So me making this request is based on that because I also have a responsibility to the city and the citizens and yeah. the taxpayers here. And the fact of the matter is, is that we have spent a lot of money 
recently and over the last couple of years to subsidize services. Now, I can't speak for the other fire, fire, fire departments, but I, I'm sure Jeff will concur with this. If the city decides to go this route and says we're not going to make any outside call, I guarantee you our other seven or eight fire departments will come in and help y'all. Am I, am I correct, Bobby, on that, Jeff? Yes, sir. So, I mean, that, that, that's, that's childish, what way this is written up. Well, if we don't get our way, we may not make calls outside the city. And I'm, I'm not on you. I'm, I, I know where this come from, but that's, that's, that's wrong. I truly believe that, and this is why I've spent so much time on this, and I have. I've got probably close to 1,000 hours into this now. I truly believe that GVFD can help come up with a solution to this. And I know you're working on it, and I know you're working hard on it. And I think we can come up with a solution that, that is not just a pill being forced to <clears throat> swallow. I truly believe that. Um, I also believe that we're the right organization to make these arguments because we actually, this is what we do. It's not third party, it's not second party, it's not across the hallway. We deal with this stuff every day. I mean, I can give you very specific information about anything on a call, what we would do, how we act, where we spend the money, why we look at the things we do, testing, on and on. I can explain all of that. And that's why we are the right ones to sit here and try and truly clarify this up and make this argument. Because at the end of the day, it, waters can get muddied really quick. And our goal here is and my main argument is with your subsidy is to show you how we'll use it on the county apparatus and to continue to replace build the equipment on the trucks it's it's not to supplement the city and that's that's been the hardest part of my argument here is to try and figure out how to how to truly explain that i'm not using this to supplement our city budget i'm using this to supplement the apparatus that you own and that we use to provide service. Brings me back to what I said initially. I think the air packs for the firefighters is probably the most important thing that can go on a fire truck. And I was really for that, but we'd only had enough money in the budget to buy 30 of the 54 air packs that were needed, and we still don't have enough. I mean, we got 30, which is a good start by making the cuts into various departments, but we just need to see how, we don't even have the effective tax rate yet to know if we're gonna have any money. So I appreciate what you said at the beginning. You don't wanna take away anything, but as a volunteer firefighter, I would really like, rather than the Granberry getting the $18,000 a year, I'd rather buy $18,000 worth more of air packs right now. I, I know if that seems selfish or not. I'm, I mean, I'd like to work together. I want everybody to work together, be reciprocal. That's how everybody helps everybody out. I agree with Commissioner Deaver that we all are gonna help. I think that all the firefighters are gonna help everybody on anything, so. Uh, it, it's just a question of money right now, I think, more than anything. I don't think anybody's opposed to, you know, maybe paying a subsidy. I don't know about all of the insurance that y'all have because you have so much more equipment, you have so much more retirement, you have uh, workers' comp a lot. I don't know if we can ever be able to afford all of that, but right now it's just a question of money. I just would really like, and I'm really trying to find the money to get all the air packs. Something happens to a volunteer firefighter because we have a faulty or out of date air pack. That's, I'm really wanting to get the air packs taken care of as soon as possible. That's where I'm coming from. Um, I would like to work with you on the thing, and I think we could work together I just don't know if we have enough information. Go ahead, Commissioner White. You know, we give the, I guess, the, all the other the volunteer fire departments $1,916. I mean, 
So what you're asking, that's what you want right now. Right. I just want to get get, get it all straight. Yeah. Uh, again, at the end of the day, I've, I've tried to be able to truly and competently argue the insurance and workman's comp. I don't know enough about it. I don't. Uh, that's a discussion that I've just decided on saying, I'm going to take the subsidy and I'm going to take it to this point. The insurance and everything else, I can't discuss that because I don't know enough about it. I, I'm not the one to be ma having that conversation. You know, I'd have to see that where you could uh, insure 20 vehicles for $2,500. extra hundred dollars. Well, if I, I will say this, fire department it's insurance is, it's not like standard vehicle insurance. They, they look at how the apparatus is used so that when you start trying to insure, like let's say, our, and that includes our brand new ladder truck, that quote, okay? The truck is not driven or used every day. So that is factored into it. Again, I can't truly explain that, but there is a quote for that from VFIS. Um, but yeah, sorry, it's, uh, it's just, I can only take this conversation so far. Does the, uh, Jeff, you have any way in on this, sir, Fire Marshal? Good morning, gentlemen. So I, I did speak to our agent this morning, and he initially gave me a quote to add the 10 vehicles at $2,500 for the year. I, I told him I didn't think that was right, considering one of the vehicles is a $1.1 million ladder truck. So I called him back and asked him to confirm that. He called and spoke to the underwriter. He sent an email to the underwriter, and I spoke to him again this morning, and he said, yeah, that's that's what they told them. And I, I guess the, the way they feed this into a matrix is they look at it as this truck's not operated every day, that the drivers that are operating these vehicles are trained to a higher level. So he didn't even think it was right. I didn't think it was right, but he confirmed it with the underwriters that is, that's correct. So what they're saying, because they don't leave the, the uh, station very often, correct. that's what they're basing it on. So like we, we've got another vehicle right now that, that we added. One of the departments bought a, an old ambulance. I believe they're using it as a squad, but because they called it an ambulance, to add that one vehicle to the policy for the remainder of the year, it was $3,500. So that was my question to him. How is it $3,500 for an ambulance for a partial policy, but it's $2,500 for 10 vehicles that are all bigger? And he said it was the, the matrix they feed it in because they, they labeled it as an ambulance. They, they figured that is used every day, often. So. When we get done here, I'm going to go and confirm where that vehicle is and what it's being used for and hopefully be able to reduce that premium as well. If they're just using it as a squad or, or a rescue or whatever, and it's not an everyday patient transport, then I should be able to reduce that as well. But Let me, let me, I, I'm not even, I'm more interested in what your thoughts are on the entire presentation we've got. Insurance is kind of, we've kind of dealt with that. So what is, you know, what is your input on the presentation by the city. So the insurance being what it is, that's a, that's a whole other animal. The, the subsidy itself, I myself was not included or had nothing to do with the contract that was developed in 2011. So why the subsidy was ever negated in the first place, I don't understand that. I don't know it. They are a volunteer fire department. I don't know why they weren't getting a subsidy in the first place. Um, if we can find a way to, to make it work, I don't see why it wouldn't be fair for them to receive the same thing we're giving the other departments. Kind of like Commissioner White said a while ago, really only thing, we're not talking about insurance today. I mean, Correct. we are, but we're not we're going to make a decision. Right now we're talking about the subsidy of $19,416 a year, which Correct. is uh, uh, $1,618 a month. Correct. That's what he's asking for, only what he's asking for, the subsidy. Right. No insurance, no nothing else, right? Yeah. Correct. Well, that's that's actually your proposal, isn't it, Jeff? Yes. It wasn't. You brought the one from the city that had all of the insurance and everything in it. Is what I've seen. You proposed then to do in a way with the insurance for their vehicles. We'll still insure our own. Correct. For their vehicles, they're on their own for that, and for their 
the work comp and accident sickness, yes. And what I hear is you're comfortable with that. It's what you kind of indicated to me in my office that you were comfortable with that and if the city was comfortable with your proposal. That's yes, if, if it doesn't deplete from the other eight departments, right. who a you know, good majority of the other eight departments depend on that subsidy for survival. So if it doesn't take from them to be able to make this happen, I would be 100% on board with that. So the question is, I think the judge looked at the auditor, can we come up with $19,416 for the next budget year? That would be for the Oh, yeah. Yeah, and again, the, 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 the proposed policy and the, the rebuttal that I provided with you all yesterday doesn't have a dollar amount in that yet, only because we don't know what the budget's going to be yet. So whatever, however the subsidy ends up breaking out, I think they're just, they're, they would like to have a ninth, one ninth of that total subsidy as long as it doesn't d subtract from the other departments, to my understanding. So until we know the, what the actual budget is for next year, we, we really can't talk really dollar can't, amounts because we, we don't know what it's going to be. Right now, just for discussion only. Correct. In the meantime, if you, I'm going to say you two, sounds like you're the one that's doing the negotiation. You, yes, you guys know more about what your business is, at least that I do. So I'm respecting your opinion on how that would go and what you're agreeable to. But at the same time, I'd like to see that you, our uh, attorney cut in on the agreement or okay. whatever it is. He hadn't seen that yet, has he, your proposal? Correct. But yet we're not going to make a decision today anyway. But as you get that finalized, that you're acceptable to it, then we've got to get through the budget process. Can we, we get the money to do it? and signed off by the county attorney. That's kind of the way I see this thing working. So the, the, oh, the one that I provided for you all yesterday that had the, had, I gave you a copy of De Cordova's and Granberry's, the, the exact same interlocal agreement that we've had for the last several years. The difference was I'd removed the verbiage for the accident and sickness insurance, the work comp and the vehicle insurance for all the vehicles other than the four that we own there already. But it's, it's been anything back to the city, or you know, have they seen what you're wanting to offer? I have not. Yeah, and I haven't either. Again, I mean, we're we're just dumping time into this. Last time I talked to Jeff was Friday at like 6 p.m. So, like I said, just time. I, I haven't had time to be able to truly pull it together. Uh, there's just concessions that I'm willing to make to move forward with this and accept a one-year contract to work on it again next year when I actually have time. Um, and there's, there's other things that we can do with the subsidy that also can fulfill the interest of the city. With the subsidy provided, I have budgeted in my proposed budget line items in there for insurance. So we can take, in this case, potentially $2,500 out to cover the insurance. Now, the one thing that I will say to that is, is that that's $2,500 not going towards the operations of the apparatus, but we can make it work. That's how budgets work. We can work around it. So at this point, I'm now meeting two of the three objectives. I consider that a great success this year. So, I mean, th th there is things that we've planned for, discussed, tried to figure out, articulate, get hammered on, learn more about, abandon, come back, redraft, approach it again. And like I said, there's, it's not just the county that can't be uncompromising, and it can't just be the city that can't be uncompromising. We can actually kind of go half and half on this and figure it out. We can cover the insurance through the provided subsidy, assuming that it's around $2,500. There's, there's no reason we can't make that work. It still leaves us plenty of money to work on the apparatus for the year. And it still gives us another year to hammer out the last detail of the third of this. So that, that's the approach I'm taking on this. You know, Matt, like the rest of the court member said, we don't know how much money we have yet. Sure. I mean, that's so, I mean, so we can't give you a decision today, but you know, I think it's in, in for everybody's benefit to we try to work this out, you know, because I don't want the dissension between this, you know, I don't want I don't want two different fire departments. I don't want two different teams. I want everybody to be together. 
Yes, sir. I would agree 100% with that statement. That, that's not good for anyone, particularly our citizens and our residents. And it, so on a final note, just to put it into perspective, the, I did get kind of a ballpark estimate on what it would cost to cover that accident and sickness and work comp for the, the members at Granbury. That's for next year's policy, we're looking at approximately $22,000. It's just that portion of it. Currently, they pay seventeen five, I believe, to accident and sickness in their work comp policy. They're, the VFIS is telling us there's going to be a 25% increase next year because insurance has now been told they have to cover cancer as one of the things for firefighters. So even our policy next year is likely going to go up 25%. Well, let's go ahead and talk about this after we see how much money we're going to get. Dan, I like this. We want to compromise. We want to work together. We got to be a good partner. We want to all work together. I think Kevin shaking his head in agreement. I like your attitude here about working with us. And I think, you know, we're not just pulling your leg when I tell you that we don't have the money. If we're not buying air packs that I was really for, you know that the money's just not there. Hopefully, we will be able to see it. So what do we want to do then? We just want to wait until we find out what the budget is going to really see and then address this again and work on the contract? Is that agreeable with everybody? That's see, I want to just reset this until another time after we get the At least we get through budget. our budget. Yeah, we, we sign off the on the budget. budget. Yeah. yeah, and also, Becky, I'm sure Becky's writing the numbers down now, which is $19,000. $416. Is that what everybody, all the other departments are getting a year? Currently, yes. Okay. So I'm sure Becky's writing that number down. If we can come up with it, we'll. I know you've got an additional issue of asking for more money to take care of the, uh, the air, not the air packs, but bunker gear and stuff. You've got that proposal in front of Becky, too, don't you? Or have you yet? As far as the what I've requested for, for next year's budget? The additional uh, money to s supply your own. Bunker gear. Yes, that, that's, that's been requested. We're just, again, we're still waiting on budget numbers to figure out where we can go with that anyway. Well, do we need to make a motion on that? This one? Here, or do we just want to reset it until we, we'll just get back with you. It's on our minds. We want to get back with you. So we'll do that because the budgets are coming up here quickly. Right. So we'll I think continue Matt's to all work he's together. Doing is making a request for that money right now, and if we got it, we got it. If we don't, we don't. Okay. Is all right. I, I appreciate your hard week on this, Chief Hohan. I really do. Jeff, yes, appreciate sir. your good work on it. I'm glad y'all working together, and I'm glad that Chief Andrews is here today to listen to all of this. So that's good. We're going. We'll figure it out. How about that? Is that the deal? All we ask. Okay. Let's work together. Let's figure it out. That's good. That's good. Okay. Well, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Chief. Okay. Okay. The next item is to consider and take appropriate action regarding approval to add on to the top of the eight foot glass partition in the JP4 administration office. We have Mr. Jay Riley here. You want to add to eight feet? Yes, sir. Judge Tuggle visited with me, oh, it's been three weeks ago, four weeks ago, he has some concerns. And right now, as you can see, we've got, I know everybody's been in there, but we basically got an eight foot wall, it's all glass, it's got wood across the top, relatively the same as what's on top of your bench here. He would like to add to that. So, I had some concerns with that, to, to keep it to where it pretty much fit the aesthetics of the office. Um, we did one bid, we could put two befores and uh, sheetrock up there, but I didn't feel like that would work. I didn't think that would pass. So I got an estimate on glass, and what, the, what he'd like to do is install three foot of glass above what's currently there, which will le still leave you uh, a little bit under the ceiling. It'll leave a gap at the top, not much. His concern is somebody could get over the top of that barrier. 
I mean, I'm going to stop right there. I know we've had this discuss discussion before. Katie went through the same thing. She went through procedure. She yes. wanted something done. She come to court and asked for it. Yes. I know IT is getting yanked around about this. Maintenance is getting yanked around about this. We had an issue with the audio in the court where they made you come up and be the middleman. Middle man. So <laughs> exactly. we. And the court has, in this court here, I don't know if this court here has, the previous court said, if you want something, the person that's asking for it, the elected official, the appointed official, needs to come and present it. All you're doing is getting the numbers. So I'm, yep. I'm not very happy with this when the court before said, if an elected or appointed official wants something done, they come before the court and ask for it and not be the messenger boy. And I'm not mad at you, Jay, but I'm just making a point. Now, whether the court wants to consider going forward with this or not, I'm not going to be here in five months. I, I truly suggest that somebody's going to make modifications or do something to property of the court, which the commissioner's court is responsible for buildings. They need to come present it. So I'll, I'll stop right there. Well, I'm, I'm going to add to that too. I know that over here at the at the tr old courthouse that there's things that have to be run by the historic. Yes. people and all that and I don't even know if we can do it yes sir and uh, those those bunny trails need to be run before coming up here and in, in my opinion uh, I don't even know if, uh, I, I'm really I'm kind of along, going along with Commissioner Deaver on this I'm really un not understanding what the problem is it's they've already got an eight-foot eight-foot barrier there yes sir uh, but anyway you know, I, I, you look at Katie's office, you look at the tech office, you look at the tech office, and they don't have nothing eight foot anywhere. I mean, uh, the judge's Definitely office. Don't my room. The judge's office don't have anything. Uh, <laughs> Do you judge? You got a barrier? <laughs> no. You know, he's going to take one of those shields <laughs> back with him. Uh, <laughs> sheriff, can we yeah. have a shield? <laughs> yeah. Can I have one of the sheriff's shields up there? I need three of them. <laughs> I'd like to have three shields, one for for Alicia and Beth and myself up here. No. Anyway, you know, make my point, and I, I said I was going to be quiet. <laughs> I think the person that's wanting this needs to come to present it. I mean... Yeah, I don't think you can explain I don't why. Think you can I just looked at the picture. It. I can't explain why they need it. It's an eight foot wall. Wow. And here's another thing. I'm, I'm, Take a hammer I'm, and break I'm, that I'm window by instead more. of going over the top. You enclose that space right there. It's not going to get no air conditioning, no air. It's going to be a hot box. It's going to be completely enclosed. That's. So, I mean, you can go on talking. What's what I got my mind. Uh, 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 if the court wants to hear more on this, I need to think we need to vote on it and go on. Because the. The person who's wanting this didn't come to present it. Yeah, I, uh, that's why I ran the numbers. I was asked to run the numbers. Yeah, now you did your job. I just don't see where it's going to be any more safer than what they got now. I mean, if somebody wants to come in, they're going to kick in the little door. I mean, I mean, uh, the, yeah. I mean, if somebody wants in, they're coming in. <laughs> Over the wall, they break Chad your neck on the fall. Close enough they're, not to gonna, stop it. they're not going to be able to pole. They don't have enough room to get a run and start to pole vault any higher than <laughs> eight foot anyway. It's, it's anyway. Whoa. All right. Can I say something about that? Sure. If you remember when I requested it, it wasn't a safe. It wasn't for safety. It was more as a, a barrier between. Um, the public and the office work and um, it's just basically to keep germs away and that kind of stuff. It's not really for protection because it's not bulletproof or anything so you know I just tack off, to add that tack office is the same way what we did in the tack office is just it's just a shield in front of it and it's not eight foot tall. Right we did that due to trying to separate a little bit from the public um, it makes it a little easier. They're not just going to reach over the counter and things of that nature. And then we actually planned to do that before the COVID deal came out, so it worked a little better. Well, also, I got to get permission to hang a picture in my office. <laughs> so I, <laughs> if I got permission to hang a, some art in my office, I don't know about installing something else. We better run the trap on that too to make well, sure that that's going to be allowed. So. Um, 
I've not dealt with the historical commission normally. I don't. They're not the easiest to get along with up there. I see one of them smiling back there, especially <laughs> this is just the local one, and then you have a state historical yeah. commission. So that's uh. Hmm. Well, you know, Lord, let's let him continue on. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to vote too. I think we got we got the deal. So, do I hear a motion? What if we don't get a motion? What's <laughs> what's Robert's well, rule of order here? To approve, to take appropriate action regarding approval of adding on the top of the top of the eight foot glass partition in the JP administration office. I hear a motion. Looks like it fails for lack of a motion. <laughs> but thank you for your hard work. Thank you for okay. your time. God, it's, all right, thank you. Okay. okay. All right, next item, item number seven, discuss and take appropriate action regarding proposed communication system agreement between the city of Fort Worth and Hood, Ga Hood County regarding trunk voice radio systems license held by the city of Fort Worth. Sure Judge, up. commissioners, <laughs> this is an uh, easy deal compared to everything that's been going on so far. Y'all need to approve the radios, uh, bring us up to the P25 trunked radios. This is nothing more than just a mutual aid agreement that no fee to, to the county for the mutual aid to have those uh, programmed into our radios for the Metroplex at no cost, and we don't pay a monthly fee or anything for that, and this just states that we will maintain our equipment and the cost of our equipment is what this agreement is. What does it do for you? It gives us access, and it gives them access to us with a trunk where we can communicate back and forth. This, this is the agreement that allows that communication to happen. But there is no cost in doing that? No cost in doing that. It's saying that we will maintain and keep our equipment up to the standards of the P25, which we already have, and y'all have approved those for purchase. And, and if, if I may throw, throw this into the equation, the reason I put it, we, Commissioner Jordan, uh, Constable Jordan and I spoke about this last week. The reason I put it on the agenda to talk about it is because this contract talks about expenditure of funds. And so, but it doesn't give it, it doesn't specify a number, which, you know, it's kind of a, I'm not really crazy about the way they drafted this, but uh, the constable has assured us that there's no fees involved, even though there's a, if you look at the second whereas, it talks about, paying for performance, you know, each party paying for their part of the performance. So uh, I just, that's why I wanted to bring it to y'all's attention. I did, a, I did a little research on this and there's, there's one way they can charge us and it come from a good source. If you get full access, it will cost a fee. If you get interoperable channels, no cost. That's what this is. Yeah. Interoperability is yeah. the mem memorandum of understanding for interoperability on the Fort Worth system for the Metroplex. No fees, no cost to us. And I don't know what full access means. I don't full know. access means we use their radio system. Uh, if we have the towers in place or we have the, the repeaters in place uh, that meet the, the, the standard and, and up to date as far as, uh, as age of equipment, uh, we could run everything through that system like Johnson County does. But we're not at that level yet to look at that. And that's a $2 a month cost on those radios. Per, but this, per system? Per, per radio, yeah. and this would cost us nothing is what this is. And I ask for y'all's consideration and approval. So you'd be able to communicate then with Fort Worth with this? Mm -hmm. Fort Worth, Benbrook, uh, <clears throat> uh, Tarrant County, yes sir. <coughs> okay, do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion to um, approve the, uh, is the judge gonna have to sign this? Yes sir. Okay, so I'll, I'll make a motion uh, to have the uh, authorize the judge to sign the proposed communication system agreement between the city of Fort Worth and Hood County regarding trunk voice radio systems license held by the city of Fort Worth at no charge to the county. Second. Second. Okay, motion been made and second to take appropriate action to allow the county judge to sign the proposed communication system agreement between the city of Fort Worth and Hood County regarding the truck force radio system. No charge to Hood County. 
and highlight that no charge. Highlight that no charge. <laughs> in red. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you, Constable. Number eight. Discuss and take appropriate action regarding three former full-time SRO deputy constables to be reclassified as reserve deputy constables in Precinct 4. Constable Jordan. Uh, the three individuals we had uh, are, are uh, not, no longer paid full-time county employees. Uh, they have moved on to other things, but they still want to, uh, since uh, they reside here and, and right next door to Hood County, that they want to still assist and help out. Um, I know as of last week, uh, we had Matt Cox come and assist us with a big uh, uh, endeavor we had, which was great. Some of uh, the reserves we have, they work on a weekly basis. I mean, it's like clockwork. Morris is going to be here every Thursday. I know it's great that he comes in and helps out. And the reserves come, and they are at no cost to us uh, as far as uh, payment compensation. The only cost we have is the bond, and we work on some training uh, in-house and some other things uh, for that with them, but they are uh, volunteers for the county and as a formality so that you're aware and your approval to move them to that status of reserves. Thanks, Sir? You know, I'm always about cost. These guys are the same ones you've had before, right? Absolutely, so sir. So they're fitted. They got the gear. Yep, got, got the vests. So no extra money. Nope. I like that, Katie. <laughs> So, the only so, one I have with the cost coming up is Morris to get fitted for a vest, but we get half that money back from the feds, and I've got that money in the budget to take care of that vest. So, Chad, when you do this, you, you hold their commission? Correct, sir. Okay. So, so I want to make a note that the this agenda item, the one prior to that, is at no cost to the county. And uh, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we... Uh, reclassify the three former SRO deputy constables to be reclassified as reserve, reserve deputy constables in precinct four. I second the motion. Motion been made and second to reclassify the reserve, uh, the SRO deputy constables to be reclassified as reserve deputy constables in precinct four. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Got your, your army now. 